Hi, welcome to IBM Spectrum Protect in the cloud. My name is Trisha Jong, and today I'll be walking you through how Spectrum Protect, also known as Tivoli Storage Manager, works inside of the cloud. So there's many different reasons why people want to utilize the cloud, everything from cost to the level of service to the investment required up front in, in order to use the cloud. And so what I want to explore today is the different ways that Spectrum Protect actually works inside of the cloud. And so we're going to go through each of these use cases here. And we'll start with leveraging the information as a service with cloud-based storage. And so we're going to look at how cloud object storage as an electronic vault works with either disk to cloud or disk to disk to cloud in, in conjunction with Spectrum Protect. Our current version of Spectrum Protect is level 713. Um, prior to that, if you wanted to use Spectrum Protect with a cloud storage pool, we would utilize a gateway. Now remember, a cloud storage pool is utilizing the cloud to store the data that we're backing up. So in this scenario here, in the first rectangle, we have the Spectrum Protect server and then the different production machines who we're actually protecting. They may be databases, they may be virtual machines, they may be workstations. And those are backing up to the Spectrum Protect server. And then the Spectrum Protect server is storing that data in a storage pool that exists on a cloud. And in this example, we are using a gateway to connect to the cloud. So this gave us the ability to have offsite copies and to utilize cloud as a storage pool. Well, with our current release, which is version 713, which came out in September of 2015, we introduced a way to get rid of the gateway and to write directly to the cloud with object storage. And so now with Tivoli Storage 713, also Spectrum Protect 713, we can have your um, Spectrum Protect clients, those are your production machines in your environment, backing up or archiving their data to a Spectrum Protect server. And this Spectrum Protect server will be storing that data in a container storage pool, which resides either in an on-premise or off-premise cloud. Now these container um, storage pools are new in 713. And the idea behind a container storage pool is to really simplify the storage pools. So once we put the data out there, we basically don't fuss with it. Um, it's a very, it includes with it an inline dedupe and the ability to encrypt the data on the server side. So once we have deduped it, we can also encrypt it so that if you are storing it in an off-premise cloud, you know that it's secure. In addition to protecting that data out in the cloud, we can also replicate it to a second Spectrum Protect server so that if your primary Spectrum Protect server went down from some type of disaster or hardware failure, your production machines, your Spectrum Protect clients could still restore from the, second door, from the secondary Spectrum Protect server. So the nice thing about our new container-based um, storage pools are they provide the ability to do object storage out in on-premise or off-premise clouds. They provide inline dedupe and they provide encryption of the data written to those um, container storage pools. In addition, we are now able to even process more data on a daily basis and able to store more data on a Spectrum Protect server in general because of the simplified nature of the container storage pools. When we look at the container-based storage pools in Spectrum Protect 713, um, right out the door, we're supporting the OpenStack Swift, including SoftLayer, and we're supporting the backups and restores or the archive and retrieves either directly to or from the object-based storage. So this would be um, backing up the data that resides on your production machine's disks out to cloud. So disk to cloud backups. What you're going to see in the future with Spectrum Protect is we will support additional types of object storage, um, looking at Google, Amazon, and, and other areas out there. 
And some other things we'll be incorporating in our Spectrum Protect storage capability is expediting the WAN transmission between the Spectrum Protect server and the cloud. We'll actually incorporate some of our newly acquired technology in that. Okay, so we just talked about how you can use Spectrum Protect to write data, backup archive data out to a cloud storage pool. Now let's look at how we can leverage a, um, the Spectrum Protect server to be hosted in the cloud so that we're actually utilizing the infrastructure as a service. But in this case, the Spectrum Protect server is being hosted in the cloud. So here you see we have the customer site. And in the first example, the customer site has a physical Spectrum Protect server sitting on site. But when we go to do the disaster recovery replication, we are replicating it out to a server, Spectrum Protect server, that's actually hosted in the cloud. And it's possible that this um, cloud is either an on-premise or an off-premise cloud. The cloud might be managed by a third party or the customer themselves might have set it up. But in this case, we have the node replication occurring from a physical server out to a, a Spectrum Protect server that's sitting in the cloud. Now, if that physical server on site fails, the protected machines, whether they're virtual machines or actual physical database or mail servers or uh, workstations, can do the recovery out to the server that's hosted in the cloud. And as you can see here, things we're looking at in the future would be to use our Aspera technology to help with the bandwidth transmission to expedite that. Okay, now let's take a look at our data protection for compute clouds. And so in this case, we're looking at protecting data, so production data that's actually being hosted out in the cloud. So in this scenario, we now have the data that we want to protect being hosted in the cloud. Maybe they're databases, maybe they're flat files, whatever they are, maybe they're virtual machines, but they're sitting out in the cloud somewhere. And what we wanna be able to do is back up those and protect those machines over to a Spectrum Protect server. So in this case here, we're looking at installing a Tivoli Storage Manager or Spectrum Protect client on those machines hosted in the cloud. Um, they could be virtual machines, no problem. We'll just install, install a Spectrum Protect client on that and then point it at the Spectrum Protect server, which in this case is also hosted in a cloud. So we can definitely do the case where we want to protect the data being hosted in the cloud. And if you want to check out a um, support statement on that, check out this, this link here and that'll take you to more information about this type of, of protection. Likewise, if you have data that's being hosted in OpenStack, we can utilize Spectrum Protect to back up that data. Um, we have a TSM agent or Spectrum Protect agent that's deployed within the virtual machines on that guest. And this utilizes a sender driver for full volume backups. Um, and then we can back that up to, to a Spectrum Protect server. Once again, we also have a paper on this if you want more information on using Spectrum Protect with OpenStack. Okay, let's move on to the next user case. Now let's look at using backup as a service or archive as a service or disaster recovery as a service in conjunction with Spectrum Protect. So when we look at um, delivering Spectrum Protect as a server, we have hundreds if not thousands of business partners and third-party companies already doing this out there. And they're doing everything with it from offering Spectrum Protect servers where you can point your data to and use it as protection to offering full scale help with implementing your own cloud. And so these um, services, they all vary, but they can offer things like chargeback. They can offer reporting on what's happening out there, um, depending upon the service, their, their basis might charge on how much you back up or how much you restore. And so you'll have to take a look at the individual services and see what they offer, but there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of variety out there in what's available. So some of the ideas for the delivery models were you might have the whole thing being managed by the customer, but it's basically a portal offer 
that the third party is coming in and um, transforming your existing physical um, servers and Spectrum Protect servers and database servers into a private cloud model. Or you might have a portal that offers the standardized services, but it's being managed by a partner. So you're basically, as a customer, just um, taking your data and sending it to this environment backing it up to this environment managed by a partner. Uh, you could also have a self-service data protection service where the third-party partner provides the complete services on a on-premise data, or you could do a self-service data protection service where it's cloud-hosted data. So if you've got cloud-hosted data out there, a third party will help you do the backups um, of that data. So here's an example of a backup as a service with Spectrum Protect. Here we have your the customer's virtual machines and the physical servers that need to be protected. And these are on-premise at the customer's site. And so they want to be able to back up that data over the net, over the into the cloud to a Spectrum Protect server that's being managed by a third party. In this case, um, the second scenario here, the customer has their own Spectrum Protect server on site, but now what they want to use is the replication of the data to a third party company. And so in this case, it's just the disaster recovery piece that's being sent off site to a business partner or to a third party um, in the cloud. One thing we introduced in 713 was a REST API that works in conjunction with the Spectrum Protect Operations Center so that the third party companies, business partners, or customers who are interested in really customizing some type of portal can go in and extract information for visibility reasons or for client lifecycle, like creating schedules or defining nodes, or on an ad hoc basis where they're actually using command line scripts to do different pieces um, within that portal. So with this REST API, we take our existing API capabilities and put them into the REST API format, which makes it very easy for uh, consumers to, to customize their portals. This final slide shows you just a glimpse of some of the companies that are out there that are using Spectrum Protect to offer services that run in the cloud. So with that, what I talked about today is how Spectrum Protect works in the cloud. We first of all looked at how Spectrum Protect can use the cloud as a storage pool so that we're sending our backup and archive data to a storage pool that's hosted either in an on-premise or off-premise cloud. We then looked at how Spectrum Protect could use a Spectrum Protect server hosted in the cloud, either for the primary backup site or for the replication site. We also looked at how Spectrum Protect can protect data that's being hosted in the cloud and send it to a Spectrum Protect server um, that might also be in the cloud. And finally, we talked about third-party companies who have various offerings out there to help with a cloud implementation. So thank you very much for your time and do check out some of the other YouTube videos we have on implementing container storage pools and on other cloud providers.